The Russians are going to Russia. Is Putin going to outmaneuver Biden in the international diplomacy again? During the Cold War, the Soviet Union, with their communist zeal of wanting to overthrow governments and replace them with a communist-style dictatorship friendly to the Soviet Union, was common. The Soviet reach was throughout Western Europe, Northern Ireland, Africa, Asia, Cuba, South and Central America, with the U.S. and its allies attempting to counter the Soviets. The strategy was part was of what was that made even the peripheries part of the bipolar system that divided the world during the Cold War. Now that the Soviet Union is gone, the mantle of aligning with revolutionary groups has been taken up by the Russians. An example of this was found in today's Middle East and Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It was announced that Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov will attempt to meet with Hamas, with Hamas officials in Qatar next week in a bid to have that terror group release all hostages held in Gaza. The Russian claim that they commonly meet with Hamas and Qatar, because of course they do, and that finding a way to settle this conflict was an interest of Vladimir Putin, who has stated that the West created this situation and the only long-term solution was the creation of a Palestinian state. It is probably not, not a stretch to say that the Russians are probably largely ambivalent to the Palestinian cause, but are more interested in the disruptive influence that Hamas provides. In addition, the influence that Russia has in Iran, the Hamas patron, uh, in Syria means that Putin can get favorable support from large parts of the Muslim population in the region to paint the West as the cause of the Palestinian suffering. The Hamas attack has also caused the suspension of Israeli and Saudi Arabian peace talks, so it can be expected that Saudi Arabia will not counterbalance the Iranian propaganda and its support of Hamas and Hezbollah. The Iranians, for their part, will be more than willing to help the Russian propaganda cause. Hamas has delivered its hammer blow and will now hunker down and take the expected pummeling from Israel and broadcast pictures of Gaza casualties. At the same time, the Russians and the UN, with most likely the Chinese support, will bring up ceasefire resolutions for Gaza. The United States will most likely veto such a resolution. If Bogdanov can secure the hostages, it will be a public relation win for the Russians and tell the world that they are standing for peace in the Muslim world against a warmonger U.S. president. Iran will be supportive to carry this message, and with Saudi Arabia sitting it out and much of the world not sympathetic to the long run of Israel, and will eventually agree to this message. The Russian contacts with some of the most reprehensible groups its close ties to Iran and its ties to the same groups, and the attack, the attack putting Saudi Arabia on the sidelines to moderate the message for the Israeli cause means that both Netanyahu and Biden will be painted as the ones that caused this crisis in the first place and are the ones promoting attacks on innocent lives. The Israeli and U.S. narrative for the justification for their cause will not be able to get through to an increasingly hostile world opinion. Biden, as the Obama, Biden, as with Obama, have been outmaneuvered in the Middle East policy by the Russians, who have influence with Hamas and Iran to create to curate a favorable message to win the contest of world opinion. Just like the Soviets during the Cold War, the Russians still had the upper hand in public opinion in the developing world.